Hello and welcome to the section of the circuit analysis tutor. Here we're going to work on this circuit here and we're going to try to find the Norton equivalent circuit between terminals A and B. So, you know, it's a little more complicated. We've got a 10 milliamp source, so these are milliamps, we've got to be careful about that. 10 milliamp source going up, 30 volt source there, we have a 3 milliamp source going down, and then we have our resistors everywhere. Notice these resistors are in the kilo ohm range, 5 kilo ohms, 15 kilo ohms, 10 kilo ohms. So we have some milliamps, some kilo ohms, so you just have to be a little careful when you work your equations. My advice to you is you really should never work in kilo ohms or mega ohms or milliamps. You should always just convert everything to the real units like amps and ohms. And when you actually solve your equations and then whatever answers you get, you get. And you can convert back to milliamps if you want to in the end. But ultimately, we're trying to find this Norton equivalent. So the first thing we want to do is find a Thevenin equivalent circuit, which we've done before, and we'll do it again here. And then we want to use that information to calculate the Norton equivalent. All right, so in order to find the Thevenin equivalent, we want to find the open circuit voltage between terminals A and B, which at the end of the day is going to be the voltage across this 5, ohm, this five kilo ohm resistor. So what I'm going to do is we're going to notice our meshes that we have here. We have a mesh here. This is I1. We have a mesh here, I2. We have a mesh here, that's I3. And we have a mesh here, which is I4. So we have four meshes. There is no mesh over here because nothing's con connected between terminals A and B. Remember, we're trying to find the open circuit voltage uh, for, the, for the Thevenin equivalent. So let's work on mesh A, which is right here. So you kind of start walking around it and then you realize this current source is on the outside branch of, of this mesh. So really all you've figured out is that I1 is 10 milliamps. But I, again, I don't like actually working in, with equations that deal in units of milliamps. So really that's 10 times 10 to the minus 3. Write it in scientific notation. Uh, it'll make it easier. And this is in the unit of amps. All right. So that's really all there is for mesh number one. Let's go work on mesh two and see if it gets a little easier. So let's switch colors here. Mesh two is this, this is a small one right here. So we're going through a 10 kilo ohm resistor. The current flowing through the voltage drop is going to be I2 minus I1. So we'll have I2 minus I1 times 10 kilo ohms, which is 10,000. So again, I'm converting from kilo ohms into ohms in my equations just because, you know, you probably, if you kept everything consistent, you know, in all of your equations, you could probably um, solve it with a different unit, as long as you kind of remembered in the end what your units really were that you were dealing with. However, you're going to hit a problem eventually when you have five ohms here, 10 kilo ohms here, and 20 mega ohms over there. And if you don't reconcile the units early on, you're going to make a mistake. So I always can just convert it to ohms when I'm doing my equations. And then at the end of the day, I get what I get and then I can convert back. So this is the voltage drop across the 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now let's circle around going through the source from positive to negative. That's a voltage drop. So it's plus 30. And that is it for that mesh, ladies and gentlemen, because there's nothing else there. All right. So let's go ahead and expand this out. So we have 10,000. I sub 2 minus 10,000 I sub 1 and we'll just move the 30 over to the other side so that's going to be negative 30 all right so notice though we can just stop here and we could go on to the next mesh but notice that we already know what I1 is equal to I1 is equal to a number so since we have this guy here let's go ahead and